Greetings and welcome. I'm Dave the AI Wizard and today we're going to talk briefly about the monetization plans OpenAI announced yesterday for ChatGPT. What is being offered? What does this mean for using ChatGPT for games masters or players of tabletop role-playing games? And what might we expect from the future as these tools become more developed and inevitably commercialized? So, on the 1st of January, OpenAI posted this blog post on their website. Introducing ChatGPT Plus. We're launching a pilot subscription plan for ChatGPT, a conversational AI that can chat with you, answer follow-up questions, and challenge incorrect assumptions. ChatGPT Plus will be available for $20 a month, and subscribers will receive the following benefits, at least initially. General access to ChatGPT, even during peak times, faster response times, and priority access to new features and improvements. ChatGPT Plus is available to customers in the United States, and we will begin the process of inviting people from our waitlist over the coming weeks. We plan to expand access and support to additional countries and regions soon. And then, importantly, we love our free users and will continue to offer free access to ChatGPT. By offering this subscription pricing, we will be able to help support free access availability to as many people as possible. Now, this is great news because they're affirming their commitment to continuing the free access, which was not guaranteed. We had a, a free research preview, but there was no guarantee that we were going to continue to get free access. And there is no free access, for example, to Dolly or to uh, the GPT-3 API, which OpenAI has previously run. So this is really, really positive. And OpenAI, it, it's a bit of an odd duck of a company. It started out as a non-profit organization set up to develop AI essentially for the benefit of humanity with lots of, you know, famous altruistic backers like Elon Musk and others. But then it went partially private and it decided it needed to raise a whole load of investment, which it got from the likes of Microsoft, which seemed at odds with their founding principle. But importantly, that private investment came with a cap of a 100 fold on the return for that investment which sounds like a lot and it is obviously if you invested a hundred quid and you got a hundred fold investment back that's a pretty good return but compared to the potential that AI holds for almost untold returns the fact that it's capped speaks at least to a certain degree of ethics in uh, the organization which sets it apart from the usual corporate approach Time will tell if they remain true to that philosophy or not. Hopefully they will, but it does seem like, at least for now, we can look forward to OpenAI being committed to using some of that revenue that they're generating from paid access to fund better free access and free tools as well for the betterment of humanity uh, through AI. I guess we'll have to wait and see how exactly this all shakes out in the long term. Uh, the blog post goes on to talk about what they've gained from their research preview, which, let's be clear here, has been a massive publicity win for OpenAI, and no doubt has also generated a vast amount of training data for them to further improve their models. So it's not all altruism. Finally, it talks very briefly about their future plans to refine and improve ChatGPT based on feedback and the soon-to-be-launched ChatGPT API, which will give developers the means to tap into ChatGPT from their own apps. And I'm sure that is going to lead to an explosion of specialized ChatGPT powered tools, not least in the RPG space. And I'm really excited to see what comes out of that in the near future. So what to make of all this? Well, monetizing ChatGPT was inevitable. It takes a considerable amount of computing power to run these large language models, we're talking servers with many hundreds of gigabytes of VRAM compared to you know, 10 to 20 gigabytes of VRAM and even a high-end consumer GPU. And OpenAI CEO has been quoted as saying that each chat request to ChatGPT costs on the order of a few cents uh, US to compute. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but when you multiply it by millions of people having conversations that could run into the hundreds of chat requests a month, well, it's little wonder that they've been struggling to scale their systems up without completely blowing their budget. In that context, $20 a month 
if we assume three cents per chat leaves them room for profit, that still covers well over 600 chats a month or 20 chats a day, which sounds reasonable for a high volume user. Um, but for folks interested in ChatGPT mainly as a tool to help them creatively with their RPG hobby, it may be hard to justify $20 a month. You know, if you're only going to use it maybe once a week or a couple of times a week just before a session to prep some things, you're not going to get anywhere near 600 chats a month. Unless, of course, you have other personal or professional uses for it, which I'm sure many people will have many things they might want to make use of ChatGPT for. Fortunately, we seem to be getting the best of both worlds, with the paid tier for power users, enthusiasts and professionals subsidizing the free access tier for everyone else. Hopefully that won't mean the free service being hobbled. I genuinely think it's in OpenAI's interest to keep as many people on their system as possible. We should probably be prepared for some potential degradation in the free service in the short term as the paying users just gobble up all of the available compute. I suspect that's one of the reasons why they're rolling it out slowly with invitations rather than just allowing people to mass subscribe initially so they can mitigate that effect somewhat. Because if that happens, it means OpenAI is raking it in and presumably they can afford to scale up faster. So I suspect it's going to be more a matter of how quickly they can actually bring more compute online rather than necessarily having the money to do it. I think they've probably got the money to do it and I think they're expecting that it's going to be a very popular service and they'll have even more money to do it. It's just going to be a case of how quickly can they actually scale. Either way, it won't be long before we start seeing serious competitors to ChatGPT entering public tests and introducing alternatives, and that can only help to drive down costs and increase innovation. Honestly, this is going to be a very, very interesting year for AI. There are at least two major large language model competitors to ChatGPT on the horizon right now, and others are sure to follow, especially if OpenAI sees a big take-up for ChatGPT Pro. We should also expect to see rapid development of these models with more capabilities, better memories, better specializations, and generally improved understanding and intelligence, all of which can only lead to even more incredible enhancements to the creative output of, specifically in relation to this channel, games masters, referees, storytellers, and role players everywhere. And on that note, I think that's all I have for today regarding the big news. Exciting and in many ways a huge relief that free access has been assured. That was in no way guaranteed. So for the time being at least, very good news. Quick channel update before I go. We passed 3,000 subscribers just the other day, which is absolutely amazing considering the channel has really only been going for a month now. A uh, massive, massive thank you to everybody who's contributed to that. The next part of the Sorcerer's Tower, my AI written D&D &D module, is in the works and it should be up very soon, as is my long delayed video on using Stable Diffusion to generate awesome RPG artwork. And there will be more Stable Diffusion content after that as well. And I just started running a new Pathfinder campaign for my Wednesday nerd group last night, in which I am of course, making heavy use of AI to enhance the game. Expect some sort of campaign diary or related content around that in the near future too. In fact, here are a few stills from that first game, which I think went really well, including an isometric battle map of an abandoned warehouse that I generated on the fly mid-session with Stable Diffusion when the players picked up on a bit of rumour flavour that ChatGPT had generated and went off on a tangent that I just hadn't expected, resulting in the need for a new setting, an entirely new map for the bounty hunters to jump them in. I think it turned out rather awesomely. Of course, I could have just tried to guide them back to one of the locations that I had pre-generated a map for, but this is just one aspect of the incredible capabilities that AI offers you. The fact that you can generate such a high quality map of a specific location in isometric, no less, on the fly mid game. Genuinely thrilled with the way this worked out. As a side note, I've also created a Discord server as a bit of an experiment. The idea is it'll be a place to generally chat about AI and tabletop role-playing games, and also it'll be a handy place for me to upload some of the art 
battle maps, and other content that I generate while making these videos. There's a link in the description for anyone wanting to join. It's very bare bones at the moment, but I'll put some time into fleshing it out as soon as I get a chance. But more on that in a future video. Until then, thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you later.